out of ammo. And there was Come on, focus. Yeah, the cheering. Yeah, Congress to fight for our values, to be a champion for the conservative movement. I really believe in that. I believe in passing the primary, nine of us running. But we need somebody who understands what we've a lot over the years, is you have to have the back of the people who give you the gift of allowing you that role of leadership. I mean, it's a gift, you know, given to those, given, given to you by those who are willing to follow you. And people lose sight of that, I think. They don't realize, and I learned hardship early on. And I learned it over and over and over again. Uh, I became a SEAL. My third deployment, I got hurt. I have flood insurance that, are, that need to rebuild, but can't. There's been drawing some attention to the area. I didn't know there's still a lot of work left to do. How, how long do you think this house in particular would take? Uh, well, some are I'm not here, but I'm like, I'm home for a day. And uh, kind of never left. Yeah. 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 And so, just social media, and people, and just beg, and help. This time, I'm here while I'm going to help the body away. And I think it's nice to be out here. They have, I don't know if you can see, like, the water line. Just over. And so, a few weeks after we were out here, she, I actually was parked in the driveway. And she came home from work and was tripping on the house, had done nothing. And I just walked over and met her, and um, she just needed help. I mean, most of the people have never, none of these people have ever flooded. Um, most of them don't have flood insurance. And this was different. There were waste treatment facilities in the back. We'll get to y'all. Well, that's great because we're, we're doing this fundraising in February. Oh, okay. We need a destination for that fundraising. That's so, great. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, these guys are from Pennsylvania over here. And, we just kind of were like at their mercy. Whatever their gifts are, we're like. When I was volunteering down here, I was, everybody was out of state. Everybody was out of state. It was, it was really cool. It is cool. It, it is cool, cool to see people, uh, people get excited about coming out and helping. And totally. It was also really impressive. The one thing I, I saw a lot was. Uh, Um, this is a good 
bit about because we're kind of reviewing a lot of the things to make it more uh, just adaptable for Bobby. Uh, we want this to be a home that we really well. And so already they were kind of trying to do that. So, yeah, like they opened this up and then they're on the shelves and you can see she rock our house. But they have this Close here. Nice. And yeah. the group of Mennonites that came back a couple of weeks ago, they were like, we want to do this exactly how you wanted it. Yeah. And they did. Um. All how rotted out all this is, yeah. all this right here, and even though some of it's termite damage maybe from another time, yeah, the yeah. room just... Well, that's crazy. <laughs> no, no, right? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Okay, I will show... I mean, we can walk down there, I can show you, but you can see where the dumpster is. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a big room. Yeah, be one of our things. But they did not cover some of this stuff, so we helped as well. I don't think they understand this. Yeah, that should buy you a couple of TV spots there. I know, right? He said, uh, the spot they left at the, uh, the box left it at the, uh, the scene. Oh. Uh, yeah. So he didn't have to report it. Yeah, he didn't have to report it. And he is extremely good. Wait, that's that. Yeah, he oh. it And I was like, oh, yeah. it's like, anything, you know, like, lots of free TV time. Yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah, like his, his story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that should buy you a couple of TV spots there. I know, right? I know, right? I
you want a different sub worker? Yeah. You're fine with that? Do you go to Tassa or? Oh, you can eat there. You want to eat? We actually go to a private school in Tallboro. That was like the greatest time ever. Look at us go. Look at us go. <laughs> <laughs> Friday Night Lights. The movie. Smile, Carmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great um, idea. It'll give us more time to actually really plan it out, make sure we hit up the right stops and. Create the right awareness, idea. so we're excited about that. It'll That's be, a great it'll idea. be really cool. That'll be um, fun. Yeah, and it will because Marcus Strell couldn't couldn't do it the next week either. So at the end of it, we'll have him come out guest speaker and just be a phenomenal event. It'll be fun. It'll Good. be like an actual rally. Um, so I guess just for for this purpose, yeah. we'll we'll do I guess me and you will just kind of discuss like the vision that we had talked about before right. um, when we were talking healthcare right. policy, right. Um, and I really liked. A lot of things you had to say, you know, but gonna your, your easy wins, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, easy know, wins like, are. Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah well, easy wins are malpractice. Reform. malpractice you know, in Texas, like we got did the in model. Texas, right? Texas has got the model. Right. And we could just, if we could just extrapolate that to the rest of the country, you might see healthcare costs start to decrease right. on a national scale. Right. Even including here in Texas. Right. Right, because it's all related. It's, oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, that was a big one. And um, really just changing the way we look at insurance markets, too. You know, if you're getting those premiums down low, if that, if that means we have to push push high risk um, individuals outside of their own kind of insurance pool, right? Um, you know, let deductibles be high. But if if they're going to be high, you know, and, and you don't have the income to pay for that, you know, can we put more money into your health savings account to, to, to pay that off? Right. And then you know, when people buy insurance, their premiums are so high already. Right. How do we make sure that premium goes toward their care? Right. And, and that's. That's a difficult spot too. So. That's, that's a difficult. That's we're gonna have to work a lot that's together. A, that one, that one that. A, that's where it gets really complex. That's like, the one where it gets complex. Like who, who manages your care? <coughs> who manages your care, right. and how do you how do you get the money that people spend right. on their premium on their health care? Yeah. How is it spent on their health care? Right, right. Is it is it getting the outcomes you need? Right. right. And, and, and are, you, are you are you treating them in a way that it actually affects their outcomes. Are you giving them too much treatment, too little treatment? Are you giving them right. most expensive treatment when it's unnecessary because right. that's what Medicare said they'd pay for? Right. You know, it's these, these it, it's complex. Right. You know, and uh, again, easy wins, malpractice reforms because it reduces the practice of yeah. defensive medicine or just order a test to cover to right. make sure that you haven't missed something. Is what happens. Whereas if you know you just stick to guidelines, a lot of times there's the good or better outcomes. Yeah. You know, sometimes less is more. You yeah. Know? Uh, and it is it is varied on locations. You know, on the East Coast, they don't do as many open heart surgeries or right. angiograms. They, they do more med medical therapy. So right. there is a way. Um, that, that is the that's one thing that right. Is Finding what works in certain areas of the country and and, and scaling that to to bigger. Yes. You know, I know exactly. so many people are working on this, but we just got to get the data in the right places and have the leadership actually talk about it in, right. a, in a smart way. Right. It, right. It's, uh, you know, it's very common. You know, is it about repealing the right. ACA? Yes, it is. Yes. But it's also about doing what's right for people and, and their health care. I mean, I know better than most how, how much you need health right. care. Right. Uh, you know. And the best in the world. I've got to say that again. Yeah. I have patients. I just had a patient who is in in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And when he he had he had blood loss, fainted, had to be just, just had to take him to the hospital, yeah. had to get a blood transfusion, right. wasn't sure if the needles were clean enough. That's, you know, yeah, the, and that's he was scared. That now I have to screen him for HIV and hepatitis. That didn't happen in the U.S. Right. So we do have the best care. There is a price for that, and it's yeah. worth it, particularly right. when there's an emergency. Yeah. So that's something to consider. So we want to keep that quality, no matter what. It, you know, one thing I like that we talked about before was you know that that movement towards what, what they call it concierge medicine, but really that primary care doctor. Or di you know it's direct, direct, you know, direct patient care where you know you pay a, a, a smaller fee. To yeah. the doctor, like a gym membership. Exactly. You know, yeah, I like that. It's a lot. like a gym membership, and so the patient's in charge of how they spend their healthcare dollar, and it 
it's almost like a retainer fee for the physician. Yeah. It looks like a gym membership. So, and the, that would decrease the price. So it's not quite concierge. It's less expensive yeah. than concierge, but you still get that yeah. care that you need. You're getting just as much touch. you need. If you need more, if they can order those tests, but you're, right. you're we're talking low prices per month, right? You're to, talking to make it economic. Yeah. You could do it sixty to eighty bucks a month. Yeah. Easily. Right. And you, you have could access to that doctor all the time. You just maybe over Skype or something. Right. You, you don't necessarily need to waste time and money going into the office all the time. Right. And they've done they have done pilot programs of it. And yeah. the patient satisfaction was right. really good. It's just the economics and stuff. Of yeah. thing. You have to find a you know, an area where they're willing and able to, yeah. to get it done. It can happen. It, yeah. It's reasonable, six to eighty dollars. Right. It, it'd be cheaper per year than a pair, you know, than getting right. braces for a child. What do you think prevents us scaling that out more right now, getting that to, to take hold? I, I tell you, the, the one thing that I see, the reason it doesn't take hold is people are spending so much on their premiums already. They don't want to do they it. Don't, they're already right. spending 400 to to $1,000 a month on a premium. They don't want to spend, even though it's economical, another 50 to $80. Right. Right for that direct right. care because so I'm already paying fifty. Already dollars. paying this. So. Whereas opposed to dental insurance, you're only paying like five to ten bucks a month, and then so when yeah. the six thousand dollar braces bill comes, mm -hmm. people are like, well, you know, I haven't spent yeah, really. six thousand this year already. Yeah. yeah, So that's where I see the dichotomy. That's where I see that right. issue is. Got to get those premiums down. The premiums down, or transfer them to a different place. You know, it, yeah. that's that's where I see it. Okay, and that's. We could go on forever. Oh yes, but um, I think I think we got enough good, good for, good. for just you know speaking healthcare policy for a little bit, and I like it. Great, good stuff. Good will stuff. you will you quickly just look in the barrel of the camera yes. and tell me uh, we're allowed to use your your footage? Oh yeah, you are allowed to use my footage, Glenn Davis. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. But it's not about your authority. It's not about just having your positions. It's helping our economy, saving our entitlements. Start to collapse in 10 years. Um, fixing the economy, working on trade issues. I mean, there's never go into a situation, a dangerous one, middle of the night, without some sort of aerial surveillance overhead. You don't need these billion dollar predators to have technology to help these guys out. And that's one, one thing, and one, one of the many possibilities to use. There's nothing wrong with that. We're tired people are having a hard time finding the right candidates for that because they're not getting trained right. And we have a we have a huge amount, especially males, uh, a little older than me, who are just out of the job market completely. It's unclear why that is. Um, some some distance in the freedom and the Oh, yeah, we should. I guess we should have some male representation too. I'll go get my nails yeah. in this. My nails have to be done so bad. So. Huh. I still have my Christmas <laughs> nail polish. <laughs> what's your What's your number one issue? Oh. Sit here. You can choose one. Number two or three. Yeah. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna scoot over next to you. Oh, okay. seen that. We were just talking about that. Um, a little break. Get that work experience. Climb the rung that's on the ladder. Trade schools. Yeah. Well, they get repair. Uh, then, then kids won't feel like they're forced to go do a four-year degree. Come on. It's the right choice for a lot of kids. Work for, for a couple of years. Get a skill set that works. Be an auto mechanic. Then you can realize that the, the college is right for you. And there's so many people in the military who, who enlisted right out of high school. All right, they mature, they got a lot of skill sets out of that. Then they get a four-year degree from the GI Bill, afraid and they're ready. For, you know, we have to be, we have to just be talking about it constantly. We have to have our leaders talking about the, uh,
You know, I've met in Byron and realized what a hard day's work was all about. It was one of the best lessons we gave you as parents. Yeah. But also, it, it teaches you. And he would say, like, well, I respect you because I know you're working when nobody's looking. And uh, that's, not, that's a lesson that gets reinforced. Uh, it's the Texans know because we've been through hell. They've grown up here, and, and now they have no home to go back to. Yeah. And so what kind of path forward do you see for helping those kids? Their education is here, their allegiance is to the U.S., right. helping them attain the wall, the right funding for our border patrol agents, bringing everybody together. We're not like Europe. Right. And I'm, I'm proud of that. You know, we, yes, we're a nation of immigrants. We're also a nation of borders. And we have a single culture, and you know, we haven't been able to have the conversation for a long time in a reasonable way. I think we can. I mean, there's, you know, there's.